All right, so here we have a pre-autopilot Tesla. That is all stock, rear wheel drive. The wiring harness, got the draft plug into the Panda. We've got our Eon that has the Tesla port installed. Try and document the process of how to get it all up and running. So we have the front here. First step is to take out the front planner on the bottom. So pull that out. Next, this piece comes off right here. We take these and unscrew these. Alright, so the next step is to pull out the rubber gasket here. So this pulls out to the side. Once you get that started, you can start pulling that out. Okay. And then the next step is to pull this up. This little piece pulls up. And then you have to unhook these two pieces here. One and two. I'm gonna put the phone down. So on this top one, there's a tab that you press in and that comes out and then the bottom one just pulls out and now this piece is out now that we've got those out this liner right here comes out this other liner over here comes out as well So now we're going to take out this box right here. We're going to have here, here, pull out all those screws. We got 10 millimeters. box right here that pulls out open that up okay next we will remove these rubber stops and screw these one two And then we'll take out this plastic trim piece right here. Okay, so this plastic trim piece comes out. Other side's plastic trim piece comes out as well. Okay. We've got two 10 millimeters here and here. Here's 
here, 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 here. I need to come out. Here has come out. There's one right here that I took out. And one over here. You can kind of just pry up the screwdriver. Okay, and then just allow. This piece needs to come out. Be very careful with the clips here. It's a little hard one-handed. So, okay, so that piece I had to use two hands. There is clips here, here, and here. I need to be carefully pulled out once you get those out. This piece removes. And now the bucket is free and clear to come out. Right. Now that the underneath the frunk is totally exposed, here's the electric power steering unit here. This connector right here is the one we want to unplug. There is a tab on the top and on the bottom. You have to squeeze those in to get that off. I already pulled that off, but it takes a little bit of pulling. And then you've got your wiring harness here. And on one end of the harness, you have these two connectors, okay? So this, con this round looking connector is gonna be the receptacle, the female end for the one that you just unplugged. So that one goes in like that. Little click once you get it in all the way. And this one, the square looking one, is going to get plugged in where we just unplugged. So that one's gonna go right on there, all the way in, that clicks. So now we have the harness plugged into the E pass. And then we have the original cable plugged into this end. And now we will route the rest of this cable up and through and into the passenger compartment. Uh, the harness plugged into the power assist unit there. We're going to run the wire up back behind these reservoirs up in here. And we're gonna come out right here in front of the brake fluid and the washer fluid. Okay, we've got the wire coming out right here. You feed it underneath this, this piece right here, okay? And then I have fed through, so I have some weed eater line, just some, any type of stiff line will do. I have fed it in through here, underneath this little section. Okay, so I fed that through there, and I'm gonna tie the end of this I'm gonna tie the end of this wire to the fishing line, pull this wire through, back through there. And then, once we're in the car here, okay, so inside the car here, this piece right here has a couple clips, and this will come out, that's connected by a wire, so be careful with that. This piece right here, below the, the pillar here, this trim piece will come out as well. And we will feed this wire underneath here, down into here, and then it will come out under here, and then the panda is right back in here. So I've taken the fishing line that I fed, or the, uh, the trimming line that I fed through, I've tied that to the wiring harness, the other end of this trimmer line comes back here. 
So we pull this through to get it through this, through that gap. And voila, we have the wiring harness okay. through. So with the wiring harness fed through here, I took this rubber piece and lifted it up and ran the wire underneath that, underneath here. It came underneath this harness or this uh, gasket piece and then it comes in and then it just feeds through underneath here so that it comes out into the footwell and then it's easily connected to the giraffe and the panda which feed into your OBD2 port down there. Okay, so after I got the wire run in there, I came back and I zip tied it to make it nice and tight together. Zip tied it there, zip tied it there just to have the cable from wobbling around have good cable management. Okay, so now that we have the wiring harness run into the footwell, we have our giraffe here. Let's get this in the light. We've got our giraffe and our panda plugged firmly into the giraffe. Now the giraffe needs to go into the OBD port, which is up underneath the footwell. And we're not gonna have any light here. Okay, all right, so we got it plugged in. We've got a blue, flashing blue and red, and there's a green LED on there. Shows that it's on. Okay. And the last step is to take the end of the wiring harness and we plug it into the giraffe, which is right over here. All right, so for running the USB cable, um, what you can do is up here, you can pull this trim piece down and you'll have the cable and you'll run it up through here. And then you can pull down the headliner and tuck it just, just up in here, okay? And then over here, this piece comes off. So if you get a screwdriver, you can pop out this little airbag piece and if you remove this then this pillar will come so this off. is a seven millimeter right here just a simple screw that comes out and then this whole trim piece here can, uh, you can just pull that down like that and that will allow you to get the cable in there so to run the USB cable, you take off these trim pieces here and, and here that we've done before when we ran the wiring harness. Um, you have the bottom of the USB down here. You feed it up underneath here into the bottom of this A-pillar cover, okay? And then you can just run, run the cable up through this A-pillar that we removed and then you put that back up and run that piece over there and then right. screw it back in. So it's been a little bit of a challenge to get the, uh, the cable up in the headliner for me, but you have the Eon, you put the cable in, you run it up on the back side of this cover here. And then what I have is a little trim piece here that I'm using to push up into the headliner and then kind of bend it down and I use that to pull the headliner down and then tuck it and pull and tuck. And we're just gonna do that all the way across till we get over to the A pillar. All right, so for mounting the Eon, I've come in here and I've used my tape measure to kind of mark the middle horizontal section of the windshield basing it off of where the rear view mirror hangs down. And I put some masking tape on there to give me that line so I can mount it right in the middle. And then I have a horizontal piece there, so I'm gonna mount it down far enough where I can, from where I'm sitting, see the Eon just underneath the rear view mirror. So I can see both the mirror and the Eon. And you wanna have it centered exactly in the middle of the windshield. Um, from right to left. Up and down, I think, just depends on how you want to be able to see it and how tall you are. This last step 
you can turn on something called gridded UI. It's kind of complicated. You have to go look up how to do it. But that will help you align when you're putting it up there so that it's the roll is right. That's what you really want to control when you're mounting it. And then you peel off the sticker and you you put it up there. Be very careful because it's a permanent, semi-permanent right, mount. So once you peel it off and stick it up there, it's done. Uh, if everything's hooked up right, you should see a calibration in process and a progress and it will show you the percentage that you're at. You have to drive over 45 and once that calibration is done, you should be good to go. Once it's done calibrating and it's just showing your regular display, then you are able to engage Open Pilot. To do that, you'll go to the cruise control stock and you pull it once towards yourself and then you'll see that this will turn green over here. So when you engage it, you get the green bar. And now, the car is steering itself. As far as speed, that's still your regular cruise control. We don't have that working.